To me, the PRS private stock is about the finest that you can get when it comes to guitar finishing. I have seen, I mean, I don't need to see these. I've seen amazing guitars, but you can see here clearly as well that PRS are no stranger to creating some of the most gorgeous guitar finishes on the face of the earth. And I have yet to see a boutique builder really touch the level of detail that some of these stains show. I mean, look at that. <laughs> and I saw this video and naturally, whenever you see a good artist at work, they're going to make things look a lot more simple than they are. So I was watching this video from PRS for Electric Tiger Glow, which is what they call this stain. And it got me inspired. It got me thinking like, well, that's a really nice finish that he's doing there. Why can't I do something like that? <laughs> and naturally, as I continue to build guitars and, you know, learn more about this amazing craft of guitar building, my mind naturally goes to, well, how can I get that good at stating something? Could I create something that is that close? And so I started going down the rabbit hole, reading all these different articles about PRS and how they stain their guitars and how they get it as good as they do. And I asked myself that question, could I finish a guitar that was on the level of something that PRS would do? Short answer is not right away, but I want to start a series of videos where I detail my adventures and experiments in staining guitars and show you guys kind of my trials and tribulations, my successes and my failures so that you guys can learn a thing or two and watch me have some fun along the way. Because even though I am chasing what is probably a pipe dream, I may never get to this level. It's still a lot of fun, and I think you're going to enjoy it. So with that in mind, let me welcome you to part number one of Chasing the Perfect Finish by Mad Lad Guitars. Working towards. So here our friend, I don't even know what this guy's name is. I think they said it at the beginning. Can we, does it go back to the beginning? This really cool guy, <laughs> he's standing this guitar, and with that, He's kind of feathering around the edges. He's got a dark coat that he puts this kind of pink coat on top. And he's blending along the edge. And then it looks like he does a top or a wash coat of red across the top. And there's just this gorgeous kind of fade going on here. And then he goes over it with orange. So now you have this kind of, I don't want to say pink lemonade, but it's like a mix of pink and purple and yellow on top. And it's just, this is absolutely gorgeous. And... A lot of it, first off, a lot of the aesthetic or the joy of looking at a finish like this has to do not with the colors that are used, but the wood that it's put on. So as a guitar builder, I can tell you assuredly that this figuring on this particular piece of maple is a wet dream. Like if I could work with wood that had this level of figuring, I would be in heaven. And hopefully I can one day. And maple isn't the only wood that gets this beautiful figure. I could show you cuts of wood from all different exotic species of wood, but this kind of ridges, these kind of folds in it, add a lot of depth and dimension to the finish that are naturally going to take color a little bit more nicely and create these cool effects and all this extra dimension that is just absolutely gorgeous. So PRS are working with like the best of the best woods out there and they have prided themselves on having some of the best cuts of wood out there the private stock is pretty much the nicest woods that prs can source and they have people all over the world that do this sort of thing so keeping that in mind when we're doing kind of our experiments realize that i don't have access to like gazillion a flamed maple tops at least not yet but there's still some things to be learned so what we saw was we saw some dark edging around here so basically he filled in the edge here and then he blended over like a a red top coat that he did a wash coat a wash coat is basically like a coat of one color across the top to kind of allow the color to darken and lighten where the other colors are so it's over the top and then after that he put another top or wash coat of yellow on top of it and you get this beautiful kind of tiger burst remember this was blue and pink like a couple seconds ago and now it's this gorgeous kind of amber to yellow fade so now that we understand a little bit about 
how this is done, let's talk a little bit about the products that were used. So I've done a lot of reading on the forums out there, and the consensus seems to be that PRS uses a organic based stain. What that means is that the base product for the stains is something that isn't too, too harsh, that evaporates really, really quickly. And the consensus is that most of the time it's alcohol. And so the test that you're going to see here in a little bit, I use isopropyl alcohol as a base. And a lot of people will say that using isopropyl alcohol allows the wood to dry very, very quickly, or it evaporates away very quickly at off gases. And what's left behind is just pure color and stain. So it makes it a lot easier to work with. And so a lot of our experiments today are going to revolve around isopropyl alcohol. Of course, PRS isn't going to give away their secret sauce on their stains, but the consensus online seems to be that it's either some sort of fast drying compound like alcohol or some sort of organic compound that like dries really, really quickly. And so without further ado, we know the products kind of being used. We have kind of an idea that we can go in. We have, a, a, I guess you can call it a hypothesis, but we have some ideas that we can try out. We know that we're not going to get the super duper nice finish because we don't have the, well, I mean, you can still get a nice finish, but we're not going to have as much figuring just because that's, we don't have access to that kind of wood yet, but let's see what we can get with what we have on hand and this particular Les Paul body that I'm going to be standing this afternoon. So let's head over, head over to the shop. Alrighty, so here is the lineup for today. We have chirping birds outside. That sounds wonderful. And yeah, 70% isopropyl alcohol, a little bit of unicorn spit. Pick this up at my car is not so pleasant. Unicorn Spit picked it up at Michael's, and then Mix All Dyes, which I picked up at Rockler. So we're going to see if we can't mix these up, and I have a spare off-cut piece of Anigre. If I had to guess, it looks like this came off of a strap body, just based on the contour. And so we will be staining this and seeing what the results are, doing a little bit of mixing. Oh, also have mixing cups, and then my certified Walter White Hood Classic Vaporizer <laughs> Protector Mask 6000. 942.0. Yeah, 69420. Haha, <laughs> funny number. But anyway, you want to be wearing these because isopropyl alcohol can be irritating. It's not like carcinogenic. I looked it up and everything like that, but it can give you a headache and hurt your nose or give you the sniffles or hurt your tummy. So, probably don't want to be reading. And here we are with voiceover Drew to walk you guys through this little time lapse. So, first things first, I mixed up a little bit of unicorn spit black with the isopropyl alcohol and did the edges of this piece of ambrosia and did a little bit of red in the middle and one thing you'll notice right away is that this mix all opaque yellow or oxide yellow that i was using was very very opaque whenever i put it over something it kind of made everything look hazy so that was takeaway number one from these initial experiments but as i kept going and dip, trying different dyes different wash coats different application methods I started getting really good with it. So I had this spare piece of ambrosia maple that I wanted to try out just to see what it looked like with a little bit more figuring and it was looking pretty sweet. And then I put a bunch of yellow over the top of it and it got really hazy again, but you live and you learn. So far so, these first experiments are going pretty solid. Okay, and here are the results from round two. You can see that I really experimented on this board, but during the time lapse, you probably noticed that there was a really nice burst on this one. So. I did learn a little bit about you don't want this hard edging like where you can clearly see the black and then the red you kind of want it to feather or fade in a little bit so with that i learned that if you just push a red coat over or you just kind of like work it out those lines will naturally kind of reduce as long as it's still wet and you'll notice that i put multiple coats of red on top of it so that like the red kind of overshadows the gradient or the shadow that's created by the the black ink so with that in mind very, very promising. I'm going to run one more test, and then I think I'm probably going to try and stain a guitar. So let's see how it goes. Round two. So one thing that I had a lot of success with in the first round of experiments was sanding off the wood. And this particular piece of a knee grave had just a lot of gnarl on the top of it. So I took some extra time to sand it out. And as you can see, even there with the test, there's still some ridging there. So I could have sanded it even flatter. But naturally on guitar bodies, I usually sand up to a pretty high grit before I do any staining, so this is kind of a non-issue. And speaking of guitar bodies, after I did that final test and was feeling confident, I figured, well, nothing left to it but to do it, as they say. So I have this single cut LP style 
body that I carved out of a knee gray on my CNC machine and starting with a traditional outside or outer dark coat which we're gonna feather in with some red in the middle to get this kind of like red to black burst going on two-tone burst and kind of went back and forth with it and once I felt that I was semi-satisfied with it I got to the best part of this whole process and that would be the peel check out this peel yeah well that's my arm but check out the art <laughs> the tattoo art shout outs to Christina Ho she's my tattoo artist out of Mansfield Texas but back to the peel yeah that's the good stuff but it's good I was happy with this burst but then as an engineer something crossed my mind you know when you have that itch as a maker inventor whoever you may be you're just like maybe just one more coat or let me try one last thing well i'm kind of glad that i did so yeah after i cut the camera i wasn't too too happy with how the red burst looked i mean it looked all right but I was thinking like, hey, I have this yellow dye here. Let me see if I can't make it work. And so what I learned or kind of the takeaway from this whole exercise was when you're doing stain, you want to blend or contour towards the body shape. So naturally on the Les Paul, you have this top carb that kind of like moves forward and back. And then it kind of creates this kind of teardrop shape. You hear that referenced a lot, the teardrop kind of look or you can call it dummy thick whatever you want to call it but once I started contouring and what I did is I mixed up basically the red the black and the yellow again and I threw all the black into the red and that's what allowed me to get this like dark finish around the edge so this darker kind of black almost 60% black 40% red I'd say this darker sort of I don't know what word I'm looking for here I'm stalling but the darker red and then I worked that and then I worked like a, a lighter red on top of that and then what I did is I had to go over and over again with the yellow I would like make a big section here I would contour it as I gently work it out that would give it like a little bit of let yellow and then I would do like an even smaller area like in the middle so just contour that out until eventually I just got to like right the middle and it was just basically yellow and I only had to contour it out a little bit and that's what give this kind of glow look to it so there's a lot of different ways there's a lot of different debate i'm experimenting here <laughs> um but all in all though i'm glad that i took the uh the extra time and i kind of experimented with it and if i could make one recommendation which is exactly what i did is just get a get a, a body and start staining and practicing with it um naturally there are some areas that'll need to touch up so right here along the the shelf here i have to uh touch it up a little bit here but all in all though, this is like the perfect campfire, campfire kind of burst that I was looking for. And then I do have to scrape some of the binding here because it bled over a little bit. But once I get that natural binding cleaned up, this is going to be one pretty guitar. <laughs> so did I crack the PRS private stock formula for staining super gorgeous guitars? Absolutely not. <laughs> not even close. But to reiterate some of the things that I talked about in the voiceover... PRS has access to some of the nicest cuts of wood I think I've ever seen in my life, like the figured of the figured maple tops. So a lot of it comes down to the quality of wood, the design of the wood, the kind of, when I say design, I mean like the top of the wood, how it's laid out, the aesthetic of the wood and how it takes stain and how you can work with like the, the figuring of the wood and how it takes stain and all the magic tricks that you could do there. But for a basic anigre body and hand wiping on stain, this isn't bad. In fact, this is quite good. The value in this exercise lies in now I have a schedule. I have a finishing schedule that I can replicate across most guitars. When I was working with Nitro, this is a polyacrylic finish, by the way. So it's a polyester kind of acrylic mix much better in my opinion than nitrocellulose. We'll go into that in another video, probably a follow up to this one. But I've gotten way more consistent coats with polyacrylic. And after I get this polished and everything like that, it's gonna shine like a mirror. And that's really my test. You can kind of see it here if you look down in this area of the finish, this top coat or the clear coat, you can basically see your reflection. And that to me is the test of like a showroom ready guitar. You see a lot of people who refinish their guitars and there's little like bumps and stuff like that and it's kind of reflective but 
that's a start. But in working towards people potentially buying my instruments, I want to make sure that I provide the best possible finish that I possibly can. And now I know the steps that I need to do to get to that. It's a lot of sanding. It's a lot of spraying. We talked about it in the, the voiceover. And I'm going to continue to experiment with it and stuff like that. But don't think that just because you don't arrive at a finished product that you really, really want, that you it's all a wash. We learned a lot here today. I have a more consistent finishing schedule now, and I can replicate it a lot more consistently, which is going to mean consistent quality for the instruments that I continue to produce. So that is progress, my friend. And progress is never a bad thing, unless it's progress towards a bad thing. But that, we're arguing semantics here. All that's to say, I'm very happy with how this turned out. I'm probably gonna carve a neck on this and do a short when I do the carve. I'm looking at the surface and seeing if I can see just how much nitros, or sorry, how much polycrylic is on top of it. But yeah, be on the lookout for the video about nitrocellulose versus polycrylic and my thoughts on that and kind of my experimentation because there's a whole discussion to be had about that that I didn't get into in the voiceover. So that'll be coming. And of course, if you guys like the videos and you like following my journey, even if it's like small steps like this, then definitely make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, if you want to support the channel financially, you can go check out my Mechanics GG page down below and you can subscribe there starting at $5 a month. Full disclosure, I do work on the Mechanics GG team. So, but I love our product so much that I want to talk about it. And it's the best way to support me as a creator. 100% of all your contribution goes to me directly. We don't take anything off the top. And so you get a lot of awesome perks, including a shout out during the video. By the way, shout out to today's video sponsor, Antrak, who's one of my day one Mechanics GG subscribers. So big love to him. And we will wrap up the video in the normal way. And that is by me saying, always remember friends that you are wanted, you are loved, and you are appreciated. You have a special talent that nobody else has and the world is waiting on you to bring it out. So muster a little courage, go out into the world and change it. That's what the world's waiting on, you. Till next time, friends, see you soon.